Hey everybody, welcome to Mastering Solutions, where we're taking the stress out of your science classes. This question tells us that we have a spring hanging from a ceiling and there's a ball hanging off of it. They let the ball come to rest and then they pull it down five centimeters, which is 0 0.05 meters. And then they tell us that it makes 16 oscillations in 20 seconds and they want us to find the mass of the ball and what is V max. So what we're going to do, uh, actually first off let's just make a list of everything that we know. So we know that K is equal to 12.2 newtons per meter. And then they tell us that it's pulled down the five centimeters. So what is that? We're going to assume that that is our amplitude, which is 0 0.05 meters or the five centimeters. Now we need to find either the frequency or the period. They give us oscillations and the time, so we can find either of them. I've said it before, but let's do it again real quick. Remember, period is always how long does it take to do one oscillation. So it's the change of time per oscillation. And frequency is the inverse of that, which is how many oscillations happen in a set period of time. So now I'm going to solve for the period because it's going to make our algebra a little easier, not by much, but anyway. So we have 20 seconds and we have 16 oscillations. So uh, I'll run out of room. T is equal to 1.25 seconds. So then I went to the end of the chapter summary and I asked myself which of these equations has mass in it. And then I said which of those equations has all the other stuff that I've been given. The one that I'm going to use then is t is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the mass over the spring constant. So now let's isolate m. So if we divide both sides by 2 pi we're given, or that gives us, I guess, m over k is equal to t divided by 2 pi. Now let's square both sides of the equation. So now we have m over k is equal to t divided by 2 pi squared. So I just want to make a note that I always solve it algebraically first, and you should too because it's way easier to catch mistakes. Uh, I know some of you are tempted to say, well, it's, it's easier for me with the numbers. Um, if you can get used to it with the variables, I promise you, you'll save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of mistakes. Okay, so now we just need to multiply both sides by k to isolate m. So now we have mass is equal to t over two pi squared, times the spring constant. So then when we plug it in, let's do it over here. T we solve for is 1.25 seconds divided by two pi. We're gonna square all of that. That's a second, sorry. I don't want you to think it's another five. Okay, so 1.25 seconds divided by two pi squared times the spring constant of 12.2 12 12.2 12 newtons per meter. That gives us a mass of 0 0.483 kilograms, which is also 483 grams. Um, both of these are correct, obviously, and since they let you put in the units, you can put in whatever one you want. They changed mine from kilograms to grams, but both are correct. All right, so now they want us to solve for V max. So now we need to think about how we can do this. Let's, um, let's do it this way. So we know that at some point of the, of the oscillations we have kinetic energy and we also have spring potential energy. And then we, on the final side, we'll still have kinetic energy and we'll have spring potential energy. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, let's go back to the picture real quick. We're gonna look at only two points. We're going to look at it right here when it's at the equilibrium point. And then we're going to look at it down here when it's at the five centimeters or the amplitude. So when it's at 
zero, there is no spring potential energy on that thing. It is only kinetic energy. So we'll say that this is zero. And then at the end, when it's at the amplitude, it is stopped and it's about to change directions. And so there is no kinetic energy at that point. All of the energy is in the spring. So now our, spring, our kinetic energy is zero. So now we're left with kinetic energy is equal to spring potential energy. So our equation is telling us that we're going back and forth from spring potential energy back to kinetic energy and back and forth and back and forth. So now let's plug in kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared, and the spring potential energy, which is 1 half k times delta x. Delta x is how far the spring is stretched, which is our amplitude. So we'll put a squared. Okay, so here, this v, this is at the equilibrium point. And there, that is where we have reached the maximum velocity. So that is our v max. And so we just have to solve for v max. So both terms, every term in the equation has a 1 half. So we can cancel out the 1 half. Now we're left with mv squared, mv max squared, I guess, equals ka squared. So let's divide both sides by m. So now we have v squared is equal to ka squared over m. And then, ah shoot, sorry, this is confusing the way I wrote this. Okay, so now we're going to take the square root of both sides. So now v is equal to k times the amplitude squared over m. Take the square root of that. Now if you're a mathematician, you could say, hey, I can simplify that a little bit more. And you're right, but I'm just going to plug it in to my calculator just like this because I, it's, it's fine. So now when we plug in our k, we said was 12.2 newtons per meter times the amplitude in meters, which we said was 0 0.05 meters. Take the square of that. And then the mass of it was, oh yeah, we solved for the mass, that's right. Okay, so the mass we said was 483 grams or kilograms. We want 0.483 kilograms. And then we're gonna square root all of that guy. So that gives us a V max of 0 0.251 meters per second. And if we change that to centimeters per second, we get 25.1 centimeters per second as our maximum velocity. If this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe. We'll be coming out with more of your homework solutions every week. Thanks for watching.